revolution. But it, I know it's taking over. Revolution. But it, that's why I'm telling everybody worldwide. This is my world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Caravan to Midnight, the John B. Wells program. Here is John B. All right, everybody. Jim Lee is an environmental activist from Sumter, South Carolina. Remember Fort Sumter? Remember that? The whole Civil War thing? Well, that's where he is. He researches pollution, geoengineering, weather modification, harp, social engineering, and a damn new world order. And he does it on his blog, climateviewer.com. Now, this is interesting. Jim also programs apps for activists on climateviewer.org. Okay, so there's a difference. His blogs.com, the program apps for activists are on climateviewer.org. I just want to make sure you got that. Climate Viewer's 3D, well, Climate Viewer 3D's live updates on severe weather, earthquakes, fires, and other life-threatening events will give you peace of mind in one all-inclusive app. I want it already. With cutting-edge technology, real-time situational awareness, and a visual tour of our planetary health risks, Climate Viewer 3D is your source for up to the second live intel on a stunning 3D globe. Oh, this is really cool, Jim. Climate Viewer 3D gives you real time atmospheric and geophysical monitoring with maps covering geoengineering, weather modification, climate change, pollution, privacy, exploration, migration, geosciences, architecture, green energy solutions, sunken ships, airplane crash sites, and more. You can create your own mix of map layers and share your screen's current location, base layer, overlays, and markers. Please report any issues. Stay safe and have fun. Knowing is half the battle. And ain't it the truth. (laughs) Yeah. Jim Lee, welcome, man. Good to have you with us. Awesome, man. John, I'm a big fan. Uh, With your vast wealth of knowledge, uh, my goal today is to say at least one thing you've never heard before. Well, I got a feeling that you're going to do that. First of all, let me ask you this. How'd you get the idea to do this? This is a great idea. Okay, so um, here's a a problem that everybody faces today. You got your favorite guy. um, Let's say John, for instance. You, 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 You just met John. Um, and you're tuning in for the first time today. Well, he has put out so much information. There is no way to possibly ever, if you devoted a, a part-time job to listen to John B. Wells' archives, you will never finish that job before you die because, of course, there's more content coming. There's always more coming. Um, and you can't catch up in the rear. So people are constantly meeting you for the first time. Whether you have a blog, whether you use YouTube, whether you're a radio guy, Archives are kind of an enemy. I mean, in the end, um, it's almost like, you know, that everything goes to this wasteland. Um, And for me, it's like, you know, I I follow people on YouTube and I'm listening to their stuff and I'm like, they're like, well, I said that in this great video like two years ago and you never watched it. How could I? Didn't Um, know it was there. How could you? You get me? Yeah. So this is this is the problem with the Internet. Um, There was a there was a book called the, The Library of Babel. Um, that talked about a, a, a library, this was written before the internet, um, that had every secret known to man in it. Guaranteed. Set it on the door. Every secret in the universe, the answer is here. The problem is that anybody who ever went in the library, um, they never found their, their truth. And the reason why is because the library was filled with just as many lies. Mm-hmm. So that's the two, the two problems with the internet currently is, A, too much content. You could never eat it all. <laughs> That's why the only viral videos are under five minutes. Because by design, we're all controlled. So we, we don't have that time by design. So I'm trying to educate people rapidly. Um, and then and the first thing that jumped to my mind is a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, I'm an artist. Um, I grew up you know, here in Sumter, South Carolina, home of uncommon patriotism. Uh, and... I was an artist, you know, five years old. By the time I was 10, I was in governor school painting and uh, getting scholarships and stuff. Um, and by the time I was 12, I was on the Internet. <laughs> um, and I said, you know what? Maybe I can do some kind of artwork, you know, do infographics. Infographics are great because, the, long story short, people don't really read anymore. Um, it's a dying art. <laughs> um, so 
yes, I have my blog where I write in depth. I go deeper than Jacques Cousteau. Um, if you want to know about the topics that I cover, I don't cover them like anybody else. Um, most people like to keep it simple, stupid, um, and their audience end up being very stupid. So for me, I'm more, I try to lean more towards the activist side than the entertainment side and much to my own peril, uh, <laughs> because, <clears throat> you know, I don't do this for the money. Uh, I've, I've, I've put my heart and soul into what I do. And the reason why I went with the map, long story short, cause I'm going to get off on a tangent. The reason why I did the map is because I can go and tell you, no, you don't understand the problem with fracking. And the only way for you to truly understand the size and scope of this problem is with a map. And when you go to Climate Viewer 3D, which is at climateviewer.org slash 3D, capital D, um, when you go there, it's going to load up a map. It's based on WebGL. I used to be on Google Earth. When I was on Google Earth, you could track satellites. You could track all the flights in the world. I had all of that already on there. Um, and then Google came along and said, we're no longer going to support the Google Earth plugin. You're dead. <laughs> You're right. dead to me. You're dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I had to figure something out. You know, um, I really had to go, what the heck am I going to do? And even at that point, I had made what I intended to make. You could go there and literally say, I want to show you a correlation. Now, people in this community love to connect the dots. I'm going to show you a correlation. And you can do this with Climate Viewer 3D. You can't do this on any other website on the internet currently. That's why I made it. Um, if you go there and you click on, in the layer menu, that's where all the map layers are. If you click on pollution and then you click on fracking, it's going to load a bunch of fracking wells. Now, that's less than 20% of the actual total. Um, it just gives you a general idea of where they are and how many there are. It's going to be mind-boggling. It may blow up your phone. <laughs> um, it's a lot. Um but you turn on the fracking layers, and then you turn on the U.S. drought monitor in the weather section. So you go to weather, precipitation, U.S. drought monitor. You got those two layers on, and then you turn on the third layer, cloud seeding projects. And what you're going to notice is they are all in exactly the same spot. And the reason for that, fracking uses tons of water, tons and millions of billions of gallons of water that... That water, <laughs> it's my daughter, um, that water is filled with radioactive waste. Darling, I am live on a show. She can come on if she wants to. Yeah, why don't you restart? Come here and say hi real quick to everybody. Hi. Come here real quick and say hi to everybody. Hi. <laughs> hi, sweetie. What's up? That's my daughter, Caroline. Hello, Caroline. you to go hold the power button on the front of your computer till it turns off and turn it back on. <laughs> she has a game emergency because her screen is frozen. Oh, gotcha. So, um, so the, the, the reason why these three are in the same place is because fracking demands a lot of water usage. And the places that are cloud seeding are doing that to fill their aquifers that are now depleted. So that's our issue um, that keeps these all in the same spot. You know, that the, the, the water usage plus the cloud seeding plus all the radioactive waste is getting shipped over. I try to track that, too. So you can go to the nuclear section of the pollution section and see the radioactive waste generated and coal waste and coal ash ponds and, you know, just things that for me to go and read about them in text, I can't really make it real for me. You know what I mean? And that's that's what Climate Viewer 3D does. Um, it makes it real for me because I can see the scale of it. I can see where it is. I can actually go see it. Um, and that's why I did it. Excellent. All right. So the, the logical next step of this is what I'm, I'm planning to do. And I've been working on this for, you know, total three years. I've taught myself to program three years ago. So I'm learning. Um, <laughs> I put this on GitHub. It's open source. So I'm looking for other programmers. If you guys think this sounds cool and you know JavaScript or jQuery or HTML or CSS and want to help me, please call me <laughs> uh it's resonated on github github.com slash resonated r-e-z-n-a-d um slash climate viewer and that's where our github is um and the future is that we are actually turning this into an interactive social media site where it works like facebook but you have a map and a good example of one use of it and there are many i'm not going to get too deep into this but the future of this is here is my location. This place is very polluted. 
I need people on the site to help me clean it up. Who's in? Vote, 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 vote. I'll be there. Okay, schedule an event. We're going to have a cleanup on this time. Everybody shows up, cleans it up. Everybody gets cred. Team Planet cred. <laughs> and I want to make it an interactive you know, solution system, not just a viewer. Right now it's climate viewer. I want it to be climate doer. Gotcha. I want people to get out there. You know, it's in to be out and get it fixed, you know. So that's the long-term goal of this. And um, that's why I've got a GoFundMe going. It's GoFundMe.com slash Climate Viewer. Uh, because, you know, the infrastructure, programming problems of pulling this off is going to be tough. But the world needs this. Um, it can also be used as a disaster response system where, you know, people are saying, hey, I'm in a flooded area. I need help right here. Come get me. Um, and that's the pur- purpose of it. it's crowdsourced mapping. I love this, man. This is excellent. Now, yep, she's going to do this the whole time because she's an attention hog. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Daughter. So, yeah, that's 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 the idea is to get people interactive and, and, and involved, and 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 this is a, a great way to do it. And a picture's worth a thousand words, right? So, there's your picture. You know what just happened, don't you? What's that? Mr. Lamb, up at, up at uh, WTSB in uh, Smithfield, North Carolina, just right up the road from me there a little bit. He's such a nice man. I go on his radio program on Fridays, usually. You know, around, uh, I don't know, like uh, almost 4 o'clock, somewhere between 3.30 and 4 o'clock your time. And he's such a nice man, he just decided, he knows I read a lot, so he decided to send me an Amazon gift card, bless him. I mean, cool. he really did. And so cool. guess what I'm buying right now? What's that? I'm buying the um, the Library of Babel. <laughs> it's an interesting book. I mean, it, it, when, when I really when I really understood the, the that this was speaking about the internet um, and made that jump, it's it's fascinating because that's the world we live in. And and to make it worse, a lot of the people who claim to be activists are actually entertainers. Um, and there is no fine, you know, obvious line. This guy's an activist. He wants us to meet here to do something, to get rid of something or to fix something. Um, and a lot of the people that pretend to be activists are using slave speak. And most people aren't familiar with this, you know, technique, but most people have heard of like neuro linguistic programming and perception management and public relations and just straight up propaganda. Um, but when it really comes down to it, the people that are pretending to be activists are actually using slave speak. And slave speak, which you can read about on climateviewer.com slash propaganda, um, is words that maintain the master-slave relation. These are words that you have to give your power to somebody in order to accept as real. They are also called high-level descriptors. So the difference is high-level and low-level a low-level descriptor is an apple, an orange. If I say an apple, you know what I mean, and we'll agree on that. A high-level descriptor, God, government. For, for you, government might mean something totally different than me. For me, God definitely means something different than, you know, someone who is another religion. Um... So these are words that are very argumentative, and, they, and, and people in this community use them just like the politicians, just like the media. And I, and I think that really between the map, the most important thing that I talk about would probably be this because once you understand what slave speak is and you understand when somebody is using it, then according to L. Ron Hubbard, <laughs> um, they are trying to control you. And it's very easily defeated. Um, trolls fear me because of this. <laughs> like you can't, you cannot get into a debate with me and try to do a, any kind of semantic ninjutsu because I am a black belt. Um, and I really suggest to the audience, you know, get into this topic and and understand which words are used to control you, and then you'll be a better researcher. So for me, that's how I, I, I was able to uh, research all this stuff. Now, I know I told you that I am on the internet, on a live show. Be quiet. No. No, ma'am. 
All right. They're, you know, they, they need a little attention, but they, they are do, with, without but a it's, doubt. It's an Android that I put on her computer so she could download <laughs> apps, and she downloaded 100 apps in one day. And was that all? And played each of them for maybe two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so man, but a daughter is such a blessing. You know, hey, she can, it she is. can speak she, if she's, she wants. She changed my life in so many ways, and I love her to death. And I just had another daughter. Um, she's six. My other daughter is two months old. So they awaken love, things. Kind of loving life right now, and I'm on my summer break. Um, you know, nesting and all that sort of stuff. No, that's great. My dad told me that uh, it'll awaken things in you. You didn't even know we're there, and and they do. The daughters do. And it really did. Um, my great grandfather had two boys. My grandfather had two boys. My dad had two boys. My uncle had two boys. His son had two boys. And I got two girls, <laughs> just to mess them all up. So yeah, that's that's the way it, that's the way it goes, I guess. Okay. And yeah, she softened me up, man. I was a real hard ass. Um, yeah, I was. I, I got in lots of fights. I was listening to heavy metal, <laughs> just all that stuff. And uh, she melted me, man. Yeah, well, it's I'm good. Big, now you got the perfect yin and yang balance thing going. I hope so. I'm far from it, brother. <laughs> but that's all I'm right. Trying. You're a young guy. There's plenty of time. Hey, listen, uh, the, the, one of the most important components, uh, I, I think, in this conversation is going to be, why did you decide to get into this? This is, I mean, as deeply as you are, you're like full immersion. That's a good question. Um, this is going to be a real funny one. <laughs> so uh, I was at the Ronald McDonald House over in Columbia, which is about an hour away from here, um, because my nephew had a brain bleed, and we were there in the lobby talking. And I'm sitting there talking to my wife. And we're talking about, uh, what's that chick's name? Uh, ah, it slips my mind. But anyway, some pop star who was singing the song and doing some Illuminati crap. All right. Yeah, well, so, pick one. They're all doing it now. I know. So what does it matter which right. one it was? I think it was Katy Perry. It's Probably. There. So Katy Perry. Um, and <laughs> my wife looks at me and goes, um, you know, she's like all in the Illuminati. And I'm like, what do you know about that? And then I thought to myself, this is something I know nothing about. <laughs> you know, it just it doesn't really happen that often where I'm just like, okay, I know nothing about this. And I'm like, Johnny Five, I need input. So I'm like, well, we should look it up. And swear to God, two like 14-year-olds who were glued to their cell phone stuck their head up and they're like, you really don't know what the Illuminati is? <laughs> um and I was like, no, I really don't. Um, <laughs> and uh, and that's how we got here. <laughs> so I could tell you a lot about the Illuminati, but um, I really don't talk about it on my website that much. You know why? It means nothing. Um, it really doesn't. At the end of the day, if a bunch of trillionaires decide to get in a room and have a club, they did that to found the Federal Reserve. They do it all the time. Um do they all call themselves Illuminati? I seriously doubt it. Bilderberg Group, we know that. Um, but at the, same, at the end of the day, these people would have no control whatsoever if, A, people learned to recognize when they're being controlled, and, B, they voted with their dollars and got their butts up out of their seats and went to the street. But apparently, um, you know, just somebody's got to win a hockey game for people to riot around here, which is really weird. Um yeah, so that's that's kind of way it is, man. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Yeah. So, what kind of political uh, slave speak are you hearing over uh, mass media? I'm thinking uh, it's, it's probably most of it is slave speak. Exactly. So, what I was thinking about doing was actually just playing uh, movie clip or news clips and going there and there and there and just highlight them. But I'd probably end up losing my YouTube channel for copyright uh, flag. So it's kind of hard to explain this without doing yourself harm. Um, so we came up with the second best option. I, I'm, if I ever get done working on Climate Viewer 3D, I swear I'm going to make this thing. If, if you want to make it, please do. Uh, or somebody in your audience, please make this. Send me a message, jim at climateviewer.com. Um, it's a slave speak detector on websites, and we're going to call it the bullshit meter. That's right. You're right there. Um, <laughs> and what it's going to do is it's going to literally scan the page and find out how many high level descriptors are on the page and highlight them in red. 
and give a, a sum total. <laughs> you know, you're over here, better. Um, I think that would be fun because at the end of the day, once people start to recognize these words, and I'll give you a great example, chemtrail. Mm-hmm. Best, best example in the world. That's why, why I focus on it is because in the end of the day, perception is reality. If somebody perceives a cloud behind a plane, two low-level descriptors, a cloud behind a plane as a chemtrail, it is a chemtrail. If somebody calls it a contrail and they believe it's a contrail, it's a contrail. Therefore, when I called uh, Dr. Rangsai Halthori from the FAA's Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, I called them contrails and aviation-induced cloudiness and aviation-induced cirrus and cirrus clouds. And when I talk to people on the Internet, I call them chemtrails. Mm-hmm. Why? Because if I don't use the right word, they may discount the validity of the things I'm saying because of their own built-up walls in their mind. <clears throat> you are an idiot because you said chemtrail. Right. You are a shill because you said contrail. The saddest part is that this is going on on a daily basis on Facebook. People blocking, banning, cussing, trolling all over the word you use. The reason why trolls fear me is because I don't agree with either camp. I don't agree with the debunkers. I don't agree with the conspiracy guys. I agree that this is a pollution problem and you can do something about pollution now, if you want to fight a straw man, you can say that it's a government secret program, but you can't go to a court of law without being laughed at or talk to your congressman. And you definitely can't call scientists. They're going to call you ignorant and hang up on you. Sure. So as an activist, and that's where I try to always remember, bring it back to that. A entertainer will continue the slave speak and never educate you on the finer points and the information that you need to do something about it. Because they own you. Me, I want to tell you that carbon black emissions are the predominant CCN in cloud formation and that the IPCC won't regulate carbon black emissions. They want to fight CO2. Um, That these clouds are full of metal aerosols, which we know. Aluminum is in the gas itself. Barium is in status 450, nitonaphthalene, sulfonic acid, DENSA. It's an anti-static agent. They put it in the fuel. So, yes, aluminum and barium are in there. It's made by Octel. (laughs) And you can do something about that today if you care. The problem is that everybody is also, once you get really into accepting slave speak, you may get addicted to fear porn. Yeah. And And this is something that people really don't want to... Um, you know, stomach. So, uh, there's a great quote uh, after you've been bamboozled so long, (laughs) um, that you can't accept the truth, even if they show it to you. Um, you could literally go in and say, look, they're murdering people and they shoot these people right in front of you and they'll go, Oh, that's great. Look at the, that's amazing wax figures. Well, that's the animatronics these days. Because once you believe the slave speak and you become addicted to fear porn. You you're so scared of chemtrails that you swear they're going to give you more gallons today. You're going to die um, because they're targeting you. The chemtrails over your house are just for you. All this happened to me before. Um, It was with a little comet called Elenin. Are you familiar with that one, John? I've heard it. Yeah. Yeah. So Elenin was C 2010 X. It was going to come between the sun and the planet and kill everybody on the planet. President Obama even flew to the underground base at Denver International Airport the day that it was supposed to meet between them. Not a coincidence. And nothing happened. So then I'm like looking around going, I scared the heck out of my family. I told everybody the world's going to end, get on top of a mountain because the oceans are coming. And I said to myself, how does a smart guy like me get so played? And I was mad. Then I discovered slave speak in my search to find out how I got tricked. And it's written uh, by a guy named Frederick Mann. I actually corresponded with a guy and got permission to reproduce it on climateviewer.com. And I had wrote a couple articles about it and did some videos. And then he contacted me and said, you get it. You actually get it. Like you're the first guy that gets it. 
and is actually spreading it now. So you got my permission to use whatever. But the problem is nobody else is really getting it yet. And when I talk about chemtrails to people or contrails or just cirrus clouds coming from planes, they're so in their head with what term is used that anything by NASA that says the word contrail in it is deliberate public propaganda. And when you begin to start to discount groups of people or sources of information just because of the source and you stop validating things that are told you fact by fact, because I tell you what, John, if I hated your guts and you told me, look, brother, I can prove it's a government secret. This is me. All ears. Yeah. Ready for that. Give it to me. And if I can validate it myself, I'm going to change my whole story. And it would be highly likely because it happened before um, with the Manhattan Rochester Coalition and the zinc cadmium sulfide spraying from the U.S. Chem- Army Chemical Corps in the 50s. They sprayed coast to coast, radioactive material, ground up people's dead bodies, find out how much radiation's in it. Didn't tell anybody for 50 years. So if chemtrails are a secret government program, program 50 years from now, I'll find out that was the case. Mm, we'll all be using pretty heavy by then. Yeah, so what will, what would be the point of even pursuing that line of narrative except to waste your time? If you want to do something about a thing, all you need to know is the facts. And the facts are that it's poisonous, it's bad for the environment, screws with telescopes, makes it solar energy, won't ever take off. Oh, wait, that's the fossil fuel industry pooping on the solar in- industry. It's also melting the poles. It traps heat. Uh, it traps heat and melts the poles. There's an article just came out. Clouds are melting the ice cap. So... At the end of the day, this is a very serious topic because cloud aerosol interaction is the greatest unknown in climate science. It is not accounted for in the IPCC models or even the geoengineering models they talk about when they're going to geoengineer the planet. These models are insufficient. They don't know anything about our atmosphere because they don't account for clouds properly. I would think the cloud cover would, would enhance cooling rather than the other. That's an interesting point. But in fact... Let's get technical because I love to get deep <laughs> with chemtrails. Carbon black is a um, heat absorber. It's a soot. So unburnt, f- burned up fuel coming out as soot. Water sticks to it. That's making a cloud. On that soot, sulfuric acid. Acid rain. Hey, you know, I can bring it down to an even simpler level. The, Go ahead. Bur- the, Brit- the Brits were painting the, uh, the engine blocks while the Chevys were being painted orange back when I was a kid and the Fords were being painted blue. The Brits were painting theirs black because when you paint the engine block black, it um, yeah. it, it draws the heat to the outside and you know it Ooh. enhances cooling. Okay, I would have thought okay, that makes the, sense to me. I thought it'd be the last thing that you'd want to. Uh, to yeah, I mean that would be that seemed like it would attract more heat. I mean, I know if I ever sat on a black hood, it'd burn my butt. Um, that's a, that's very interesting. Carry on. Yeah, so in 1974. 376, don't quote me on it, 74, there was a guy who came up with a paper called Carbon Dust Absorption of Solar Energy. In that paper, he said, I can steer hurricanes with carbon dust. Got a nice diagram of planes dumping carbon dust near a hurricane going into the eye wall. And the idea is that it will attract heat. The sun will heat that black portion, and it will create increased pressure. With an increase in heat comes an increase in pressure, and it'll send the hurricane going this way. Guess what? You seen any big hurricanes hit us lately? No, we're Um, overdue. Yeah, so that was 74. Now let's flash forward to today. The Department of Homeland Security in 2008 met with Bill Gates' Pfizer team and Nathan Mervold, the patent troll, who wrote some patents to steer hurricanes. Swear to God. It's on uh, climateviewer.com. Go to the search box, type in Department of Homeland Security, enters the weather modification business. And you can see the report that was deleted from the internet that I pulled from archive.org of the 2008 conference they had called the Hurricane Modification Workshop. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So if you, (laughs) yeah, there's a photo of everybody that was there at the bottom too. And there's a couple geoengineers in there. It's great. Um, Yeah, so that was deleted from the internet. I brought it back. Uh, the, The Homeland Security guys are doing this because they call it Hurricane mitigation and hurricane mitigation is to save national infrastructure from the disastrous effects of hurricanes and climate change. So Mosh Alamaro, M-O-S-E-A-S, 
H E M O S H E Alamaro A L A M A R O uh, from MIT was at that meeting and he said, "Wait for it, we can steer hurricanes with carbon black dust." So this was put forward seven in the seventies first put forward and here today guy from MIT at the department of Homeland security saying, let's steer some hurricanes with carbon black dust. Well, guess what? Planes make that crap all day long. I was a uh, privy to, I was witness to hurricane Sandy uh, coming overhead and watching the planes fly through it, around it, right in front of it, just making it bigger and bigger. And bigger. Are you serious? And I, and I think to myself, they said in the 70s that that carbon black dust can intensify storms if it's not done properly. Well, why are they routing the planes right in front of it? So anyway, long story short, carbon black dust is now in, and it's on climateviewer.com, it's uh, in a different article, uh, somewhere on there. Just type in uh, carbon black dust FOIA <laughs> in the okay. search box. And you're going to see that the U.S. Air Force Research Lab and the U.S. Navy uh, Naval Warfare Center at China Lake, uh, the place where they flew out of for the Vietnamese weather warfare, um, China Lake and uh, the Air Force Research Lab say that they're going to use carbon black dust to modify the weather for warfare purposes. Two 1994 FOIAs, I pulled them from archive.org on Sunshine Project. Dot org, a website that was also deleted. The Sunshine Project website is amazing. You got to go look at it. Um, archive, big shout out to um, my boys at archive.org. Uh, so I pulled that from there. Um, and in those two FOIAs, they say carbon black dust. Well, guess what? Owning the weather in 2025. You've heard of that. Mm. 1995 think tank piece uh, for the U.S. Air Force where they said they got a little chart in there and it shows technology timeline when it will be invented 2005 cbd carbon black dust 2005 katrina same year coincidence um so in the air force 2025 document this is the year after those two foias uh came out they said carbon black dust by 2005 well guess what the very next year because all the debunkers say, oh, no, no, that was just that was a think piece. It was just a think piece. They ain't actually doing that. The very next year, 1996, the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force met at the Weather Modification Test Technology Symposium and discussed weather warfare. And they went all through the slides from the stuff from owning the weather. They're like, this is a great idea. <laughs> um, and if you look in there. There's three slides. Uh, the, the articles on Climate Bureau as well. Uh, U.S. military enters the weather warfare. Enters a uh, uh, U.S. military engages in weather warfare despite N mod ban. Um, and in there, you see the three slides that say carbon dust cloud seeding. What we can do with it. And you guess what it is? It's the stuff from owning the weather in 2025. Muddy roads, MP traffic. So if it's just a think piece, why did the U.S. Air Force and Army meet in 1996 to discuss it, making it a reality? It was 97, actually. Excuse me. 95, 96, they wrote the paper. 97, they had the, the Test Technology Symposium and said, let's make this a reality for real. So I'm left with planes making carbon black dust. Everybody says we use it to steer weather, make weather, weather warfare, even though it's illegal. Take that, U.N., um, when are people going to get it? Uh, they'd rather focus on real fancy delivery systems with pumps and laser guided fuel dumps. <laughs> just, I'm like, bro, I have every piece of evidence you need to prove this in a court of law, that this is an issue. And I even went to the U S EPA in Washington, DC was on C-SPAN talking about this very topic. Um, and they're not going to do anything about it. The U.S. EPA, for the first time in history, is going to regulate planes, and they only want to regulate CO2, nitrous oxide, methane, oh my God, geo, no, greenhouse gases, oh, my God. <laughs> right. So they only want to regulate greenhouse <laughs> gases because they're going to affect human health. Okay. And I went there, and to be a real jerk, <laughs> I brought four of my friends. So I brought Max Bliss. I brought uh, Amanda Danielle. um, Madison Star Moon, um, uh, Patrick Roddy, and uh, Michael Saraceno, and we gave them hell. They, I went in there and I talked about pollution. 
but I did not want it to not be said about the geoengineering, the new world order, Q Max Bliss. <laughs> and he literally on the thing was like, and you guys are doing this for the new world order. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So we got on, uh, this hearing wasn't even going to happen. Uh, a hacker friend of mine said, dude, I, I saw this text file on a FTP server. Read this. And it said, if you believe that uh, airplanes are endangering public health, uh, please let us know and we will have a hearing. I was the only person to sign up to go. <laughs> and the EPA called me back and they're like, are you sure you want to come? Are you sure? I mean, you could just write us something. And are I'm like, you no, serious? They, they I contacted to God, you and asked you if you wanted to go? U- there's a YouTube video on my on my channel that has Lucy Audet from the EPA calling me, begging me <laughs> Don't not come. to come. <laughs> you fear me. So anyway, I, I went, and it was an epic success. Well, flash forward to today, a month ago, they decided, yes, we are going to write regulations. So for the first time in history, EPA is going to regulate planes. Problem is... They don't care about our clouds. They really don't. Um, And the reason why, and I knew this going in, the US EPA and the FAA right now are testing a fuel to do what you just said, to cool the planet. I thought they cool the planet. Well, I said all that about the black stuff, heating the planet so that you can understand this. Today, um, they're trapping heat. Heat comes in, it's supposed to go back out to space. There is localized cooling if you're directly under the cloud. Everybody knows that. If you ever walked under a cloud, it feels great. Um, But come nighttime, when those clouds are still here, that heat should escape to space. But it doesn't because it's now insulated, like the Venus effect. It's just going up and hitting that wall. And that's why it stays hotter at night. That's called the diurnal temperature range. So it affects the diurnal temperature range. It also affects low um, winds. It can actually uh, make winds along the surface uh, come to a halt. Um, And that affects pollution, which can now kill you because the pollution is not blowing away. It's hanging out and killing you. Um, And it also finally overseeds the sky. And when you overseed the sky, you can shut off precipitation. If there are too many seeds in the sky, water drops cannot get big enough to fall. And that can cause a drought, like in California. So at the Cal Water 2015 conference they had, they said just that. That overseeding the sky with pollution can cause our drought. Well, there's a computer called NextGen. It's Skynet. And it uses a program called the AEDT. Um, aviation Environmental Design Toolkit to decide where to fly the planes, how much fuel to burn, and where to go. So there are highways in the sky controlled by a robot that tell them when to press the gas pedal. And turns out California's got two of those highways and a big drought problem. And it's like people can ignore this stuff as long as they want. I've been way ahead of the curve. I, I've been saying this stuff for three years. I've been right 100% of the time on this one. Yeah, I'm not always right, but in, on chemtrails, I nailed it on my first article I wrote three years ago. I was like, trade secret chemicals, it's these, got to be CCN. The reason why, I had studied cloud seeding for a couple years before that. You know what I mean? So I hadn't even looked into chem, um, into cloud seeding at all. Say, do you ever get the idea that the stuff you're talking about online is frowned upon by the, by they who would be our betters if only they could? <laughs> Isn't that true? Uh, anything you can do, I can do better. You're right. Um, so, yeah, I get visited by uh, the American military and the Russian and Chinese military regularly. Uh, my site's been hacked at least 15 times. Um, I finally went to a more secure method of just having no database at all. So um, you can't hack it. You, know, um, you can't hack Climate Viewer 3D. Uh, you might be able to hack the server under it, but it's on a GitHub. It, I go git clone, and it's back. Um, so I've had to resort to a lot of methods to keep it online. It's tough. Um, I am uh, just one man who makes websites and fixes PCs for a living. I take care of my grandmother who has Alzheimer's. My wife and I have two kids and a newborn, and I do this at night. Um, my daughter calls me Batman because I save the world at night. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, 
any help I can get uh, at uh, GoFundMe.com slash Climate Viewer, we're going to put that, I'm going to put that into the server and I'm going to put that into hiring coders to fix some of the problems I can't get past. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm self-taught, you know, I do graphics, I'm an artist first and foremost, and I've taught myself HTML and jQuery and these programming languages for websites over the last three years, but for what I'm trying to do in the future with Node.js and, you know, a flat file database and, you know, connecting people together in a, a collaborative network, that's, that's like, way, that's way up here stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, I heavily rely on a friend of mine. Um, he's a, he's a godsend. He's taught me so much. Um, his name's Seth and it's just the two of us that have worked on this for three years now. And we have already, you can get on there like Facebook and hit, Here's my status update post, and it shows up on a wall. You can have the wall show up as a graph. You can show it as a Twitter feed or a Pinterest style thing. Um, and we've got, you know, we talk on the thing, and um, you can go in and map things already. But it has to be polished. It has to be grandmother proof. Um, so it takes a lot of time. I've put well over three thousand hours um, into my websites so far. And I don't think I'll ever stop because this is, it's a passion. You know what I mean? Um, I have a lot of fun with it. I'm not going to lie. It's very, very fun. Um, and I like to learn. So, and I remember everything I read. So yeah. I guess that's a good thing. Well, listen, I've got a rhetorical question for you and probably one sure. you've heard before and probably one that's not that much fun to be asked, but what the hell is wrong with these mugs? They, uh, they mostly don't know what they're doing. They just do it anyway. This thing about, you know, grinding up bodies to see how much uh, radioactive mm -hmm. uh, uh, material yeah. got into them and, and all of this. I mean, I mean, is this – look, I, I, have to, I have to go back to um, – I have to go back to Scripture. Okay. And all of that stuff that's laid out in Scripture, it's very difficult to argue with, particularly in these last days. I was just reading something from uh, Carl Gallup's, um, who's come on the program several times, and um, – He's saying, you know what, don't look now. I mean, I'm paraphrasing Carl, but he's saying, don't look now, but everything that's been written in Scripture is coming, is, is, is coming to pass. I mean, there's this whole satanic thing, you know, the, for everything from the, all the, uh, the pop stars. I'm not going to say all the pop stars, but it seems like all of them are all given the, you know, the, the chicken eye, you know, the, the yeah. Illuminati eye. Okay, fine. Oh, yeah, that's real scary stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm all intimidated. That stuff. You know, bleep you, you know, and all that stupid stuff. But what, what is the point, philosophically, what is their problem? Well, they don't want you to come to the EPA meeting. They don't want you to publish uh, your, your material. They don't want you to have your website. They don't want people to know, oh, you know, they know what's best. I mean, okay, if they want to say they know what's best and, and, talk, and do a little of that slave speaking to us, okay, fine. They know what's best, sure. But what do you think the real agenda is? Is it mass annihilation? Is it just control for the sake of control, whether or not they can handle it or not? We'll find out about that later. I mean, what have you been able to, to crack as far as the code that unlocks the mind of these people who, to most normal people, would seem deranged? That is a great question. So very simply, um, they believe they're God. They believe they're gods. Yes. So... A good example. Um, the guys who do harp. Yeah. They are literally erasing the Schumann resonance, the, the heartbeat of our planet. Oh, gotcha. By modulating the electrical circuits of our planet. Um, they are amplifying the electrojet. They are pumping magic missiles or magnetic missiles into the uh, ionosphere. And they do it with reckless abandon because... They believe they're God. So your revelations do not apply to them. Oh, gotcha. Therefore, they're not going to destroy the world. They haven't chose to. <laughs> um, and, and that's it as simply put as possible that in, in the, the greater scheme of things, science and religion, they do this and they fight each other. And I'm kind of in the I'm always right in the middle. <laughs> um, I believe that there's room for both. Um, you know, God said, let there be light. That was the big bang. Boom. All right. I'm not going to get too deep on it, but, um, I believe that, that the books written to these gods are control, uh, oriented, um, social control oriented, especially with guilt. 
as their motivator and that um, the people who don't believe in these books, they believe they are God. Worship me. Follow me on Instagram. Um, and that's just the, the crux of it. So other celebrities don't even matter to them. They may be in a club, but that's only when their whole club is hurt. Right. Um, if they're, if they, uh, Taylor Swift ain't calling nobody till Kanye's, you know, really beating up on her cause she's rich and her daddy was a banker and <laughs> she was always rich. Um, and they don't really value our opinions because we weren't as educated as them. Well, guess what? I have a high school diploma in some college and I'm smarter than just about every scientist I've talked to on the phone with because I easily defeat their arguments because they are in this mental box. They really are like their, their education put them in this box where only these things can be true because I, t I was taught it and I saw it on a graph. Um, and when you tell them, you know, I'm talking about clouds here, dude, <laughs> what I was totally ready for you to say chemtrails so that I could go, you're, you really need to get educated, but you said clouds, and then you came at me with this, you know, 5,000 times greater than the IPCC quote, and I'm like, what? I've actually got to research that, because I've never heard that. And that's it, compartmentalization, Manhattan Project, all over and over and over and over again. We're all building a nuclear bomb. Nobody has a freaking clue. Right? I mean, isn't that how these things work? Well, it certainly looks that way. Well, I mean, that's how it worked before. The Manhattan-Rochester Coalition was an offshoot of the Manhattan Project where they wanted to see what the effects of a nuclear bomb blast in America would be. And their bright idea was, let's go spray zinc cadmium sulfide from coast to coast in a plane, fly, a flying boxcar, I believe it was called, and they just dumped it. Um, they also went to St. Louis and went to poor black neighborhoods and sprayed it from uh, Jeeps, from motorcycles, from rooftops. Um, and they, there's even a plume diagram. You can actually read about the Manhattan-Rochester Coalition on climateviewer.com. I have the report there. Um, and then I did a little digging. So it turns out that the St. Louis paper that uh, Lisa Martino Taylor, I think her name was, Something like that. Um, she she wrote the report that brought this to the surface 50 years later and is getting people who were harmed during that time, you know, to come forward and, can, you know, tell their stories. And they're horrific, despite the U.S. military still to today saying zinc cadmium sulfide is completely harmless. It is a radioactive substance. It is mildly radioactive. It ain't, you know, in plutonium. But it's still the military dumping, you know, radioactive chemicals without consent. And that's the key word. So then to go and, you know, see what the effects are, they go, oh, he's dead. Let me get, his, let me get the thyroid, send this to this national lab, send the gallbladder here. You know, just it's super creepy because we are cattle to them. We are property. We are assigned our tax property number and there's your dead and have a nice day. Go produce something and then consume it after you're done. Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, these people think they're God. And you should worship them. Even the guys at the media. I mean, you got people that are sitting there telling the news that think that they are the coolest thing to ever happen. Look at me. I look just like Barack Obama. Damn. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really, it's so pathetic, the <laughs> egomaniacs that I have to deal with on a daily basis. You know, and I happen to, to to suffer from the ego issue as well. I mean, I get my ego stroked all the time. I get a girl one time told me she'd cut her arm off to spend 10 minutes with me. My wife still to this day is like, Shh. well, there's a visual. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a fine line. You have to stay humble. You have to, to keep yourself grounded in your humanity. Um, you know, I was raised in a trailer park. I'm, I've been poor most of my life. Um, you know, I didn't have it like some rich guy with a spoon in his mouth, you know, a silver spoon in his mouth. Um, but I believe I'm just as capable as anybody. Um, and I know that, you know, any, there are lots of people in the audience that, are, you know, they might have a high school diploma and they do something with their life. They don't go into mountain loads of debt at college, you know, just to, you know, <laughs> buy three cars and keep your kids in daycare all day long. You know, my kids are here for a reason because I raise them. I love them and I like them to be here. But there are people out there that both family members working all day, see their kids right before bed, and don't even talk to them because they get somebody else to feed them. And that's no life. 
Um, that's no life at all. So for me, you know, I, I try to keep it simple. We don't spend a lot of money. I don't need a lot of money. Don't want a lot of money. More money, more problems, as they say. Well, yeah. <clears throat> you know, and the, and the guys that, um, that's what was sold to the, um, to those in, shall we say, um, the ur- urban it's not urban at all. That's that's stupid. I, th- I think that's slave speak too. Frankly, I'm talking mm-hmm. ghetto. Uh, yeah. th- they're uh, they were um, whatever their potential might be. It's not being realized to start with. So, I mean, they have been convinced that stuff is what makes you who you are. It exactly. doesn't make any difference. My father always said you can live in a tent and have culture in your life, or you can live in a castle and have none. You you can be you can be, live in a in a in squalor and still be educated and if you can read you can teach yourself anything and after that it's up to you, but but the, we have a huge uh, a huge percentage of the population that uh, you know they've got some five hundred dollar car they got from the police department yeah. auction and they put twenty thousand dollars worth of wheels on it the, the size of Conestoga wagon wheels I mean. You know, if it was just one or two people doing it, that'd be one thing. But when you see this all over the place, you got to say this is a trend. And so you go, well, what, what's the basis of the trend? Why, why all the garish chains? Yes, y'all go outside. Why, I mean, it must have been pretty widespread for the Oxford Universal Dictionary to to include bling bling into the lexicon. Okay, just yeah, saying. So, so yeah, I'm yes, with sir. you. You know, if people, I mean, history is replete with stories of of those who came from humble beginnings and, and affected the world in a positive way and they're still remembered you know so that yeah. doesn't mean anything i don't like taylor yeah. so i think taylor swift you know kind of cute but other than that you know i don't like her oh, music. my daughter loves her I, and i you know after a while if you hear it so many times it's so you know designed to infect your brain you'd be hearing that stuff at night it's like oh my god i'm listening to taylor swift in my head i'm crazy there was a great video about well, that if you want to have a oh. weird experience listen to the disney radio channel sometimes radio I'll disney pass. oh my god no, I'll pass. I mean, I'm telling you, man, that is like an oral acid trip. I, Not I that I know what Disney one of those channel. is, but, you know. I watched the Disney Channel kids thing, and, and it was supposed to be like a kids channel. It was a soap opera looking thing, and two girls were backing that thing up and dropping it like it's hot. And I was like, this is the Disney Channel. Um, but back to what you were saying, like I, my, my town um, is like 60% black people. So, you know, a lot of my friends are black. And uh, we talk about these sorts of things. And, you know, I always hit them with the usual, you know, that music you listen to. All it does is keep you down. If you're going to listen to rap, listen to Immortal Technique. <laughs> um, you know, somebody who's going to tell you something inspirational or educate you. You know, like I like rap that's, you know, common, you know, like um, <laughs> most deaf, Talib quality, common, you know, intellectual rap. But most of the people I know, they like you know, drop it, you know, like it's hot. I mean, because I dance to drop it like it's hot. I love to dance, but whatever. This stuff infects your brain, whether you like it or not. Jason Derulo, you know, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I actually wrote WNOK and said, what the hell are you playing that for? And they took it off the air because <laughs> it's that, it's that demeaning. And I mean, this infects kids' heads. So these kids grow up with a screwed up moral system that tells you, yeah, get dressed, get, you know, get fat car, all that stuff. And they have, they might get rich, but they'll never have wealth. Well, the other um, part is, it's all in your mind. Yeah, it's and, all and that, in your mind. You know, Neville Neville Goddard uh, said, you know, there there's no reality outside consciousness, so therefore, it's all in your mind. And you cannot fight an enemy who has outposts in your head. Who said that? So, is that yours? Uh, Sally Kempton. <laughs> oh, gotcha. No, that's good. That's it. That's it. That's in the Slave Speak article. It's there's these three quotes that he keeps going back to, and um, you know, we would not let our enemies have um, guns. Why would we let them have ideas? Um, and there's another one. I, but anyway, um, so to the Slave Speak thing, this is uh, I don't. I'm not going to drop the N word on your radio show, but let's just say it this way. It's okay. It's a it's TV a, show. Yeah. So I I, I tell everybody. Um, you know, that are my black friends, people I'm close to. I don't go around talk, tapping people onto the gas at the gas station, going, "Hey, you know this stuff." But I tell them, I say, "You know what, man? If I could, if I could best educate you on slave speak, I'll put it like this: If I can look at you and say nigger, and you'll dance for me, I control you." Mm-hmm. In those words are enough to disempower the entire Milwaukee crazy, you know, bullshit that people are taught on a daily basis. Um, and if people recognize that you have given so much power to a word, yeah, N word, you've given it so much power. It is bigger than this entire planet. 
It can crush careers. <laughs> well, it can Why? get you killed if you're not careful. Why? So at the end of the day, we were taught as a kid, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And if somebody can look at you and say the N word, and that's going to make you come unglued. That's going to make you off the chain. You got to punch you in the head. You got to gank that. If you've got to do that because somebody said a word to you, you are weak. Mm-hmm. And I say that to every single person. You know what they do to me? Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, have this aha moment. But and, you know. I'm telling you. And that is called disempowerment. Yeah, that's I, like I, gay Go ahead. Um, well, I, I take your meaning, but uh, the thing is, is that words do have power. But what you're oh, saying is, it's a, they only have as much power as you give them. Exactly, and that's the secret. That is the secret to the whole universe. That is the secret to unraveling people who lie to you on YouTube, people who pretend to be part of the, the movement, but they're really just snowballing you. The, once you realize that people are using words to control you, and these are the words, everybody, mm. everybody knows people use words to control you. You need to know what the words are. And you can easily just like shoot holes in anybody. Why do you use that, man? You mean cloud? And here's the easiest way to defeat anybody who's a slave speak. I did not understand what you meant by dinonaphthalene sulfonic acid. Could you please explain that to me? That's it. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's the simplest method in the world. That's slave speak 101. If you're not educated. Try it. Somebody uses a word on you. And you do not know what that word means. And I mean, not like you just look at your friend and go, yeah, I know what that means. I mean, you, inside your head, know what that means. If you don't, ask the question. You're going to be surprised how many times people cannot answer you. Because they made that crap up. Do you reckon this is just like one ongoing battle with no resolution? Just like a, instead of a hundred years war, now we have a thousand years war? Yes. I mean, is that what this is really all about, just conflict, and it exists, yes, and it's going to exist, and it will morph, and it will change forms, it will not go away, it will always exist? It, it is the lever. It is the lever that turns the world. Um, so, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, It's the name of the book, um, is a paper that's out there, and it talks about the technocrats and how they will control the world for now to the end of time. And they plan on doing it through the use of technology and Mass media mind control. Yeah, we talk to Pat Wood about that all the time. Yeah. 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 So um at the end of the day, we're there. Um, they're trying. And what they did not expect was that we would take this internet and use it for ourselves. Mm-hmm. That we would use it the way we have and as fa- as effectively as we have and as fast as we have. <laughs> so right now, I'm deconstructing the damn matrix right in front of them. <laughs> and there's nothing they can do about it. Well, let me you ask you this. You got, you got a lot of help out there. I mean, there yeah. are there are a lot of people yeah. who are involved There's in this. There's a lot fight. of people that educated me, you know, I, and I'm always learning. So, like, that's the that's the challenge to yourself is take somebody you hate and still be able to hear them. To, it, somebody you absolutely hate. If I know there's somebody listening. You know this Democrat or you know this Republican. You never ever 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 listen to them because you are so shut down. Go talk to them and really listen. You might learn something. And that's what slave speaks all about is that when this in this, you know, Hegelian dialect where we've already set it up, the two sided bull crap, everybody's so on their camp that they have eliminated the possibility that any sane idea could come from the other side because they have given their full slavery to that system. I'm a Democrat. That's it. You know, I'm a Republican. That's it. Um, And each idea should be individual. Like every single sentence a person says should be evaluated on its own merits. And even if you disagree with everything a guy said and that one sentence hits you in the gut, tells you that's the truth, you got to look into it. <laughs> Me personally, I got to look into it. So that's where, the, that's where the, the, the future lies is that people right now get out of this demoralized state. Start understanding that we can do something about this, and the only way we can is to get really educated, like to get deep. If you want to, and you can't fight every fight, so you got to pick your fight. Pick your fight, get educated, act. That's all that's left to change this world. You know, start with the man in the mirror. Michael Jackson was brilliant. So that's where I'm at. I'm trying to give people tools now because we know everything we need to know to do anything. 
on any topic. You know what I mean? Mm. If you care about geoengineering, harp, chemtrails, uh, Wi-Fi, EMF exposure, you know, if you pick your topic, bees dying, do something about it. Get all the best evidence, compile it into one place. It took me three years to get my blog done and compile all that stuff. And, you know, all total four years with the, the website, the map, and all the thousands of hours, I put way more time into it than anybody ever is going to do. But if you just can collect some papers and evidence, print them out at your house, and go talk to your congressman and have the evidence to prove it, not something some dude sent you, hey, get this, print this flyer out. It's going to totally arm you with the truth, and it's using a whole bunch of slave speak words on it. You're going to fail, and you were set up to fail. Yeah, we know that we know what uh, at least we think we know what HARP does, right? It was, there well, are a lot of people who think they know what HARP does. Well, I know what HARP does. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be a communications device, but that was just for public consumption. You know, we've been doing that yeah. bouncing uh, shortwave yeah. signals off of clouds for a long time, bouncing it off the uh, the ionosphere for a long time. I mean, the yeah. ham radio is really fascinating, not because oh boy, ham. I, I mean, I wish they'd come up with a a little bit a name with a little more flash than that, really, but. Ham will work, but you find out that there are certain hours it's, of the day. It's hard as a mother. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's you. Uh, there are certain hours of the day when certain frequencies work better than others, and they won't yeah. work during other uh, times of the day. Yeah. But when yeah. you you get into this stuff, it's just like learning to fly an airplane. It's not just about steering the thing around in the sky. It's not. It's learning uh, all kinds of of uh, collateral issues, uh, weather issues, pressure. You know, how how is it that my altimeter is reading lower than this chart here says the field elevation is, you know, mm-hmm. well, it's because the atmosphere around the earth is not a uniform concentric bubble. You know, it, it, it swells out in it's places. A, it's and a so, liquid and it's constantly. Yeah. Moving. You know, so, yeah. so what is your take on harp? What is it for? I've heard everything from it generates earthquakes to it causes, it you know, could. weather problems uh, to where, you know, it'll vaporize little green men when they come in on their, Little surfboards and skateboards, and sometimes on little wheelchairs. I mean, I've heard everything about it. All right, so let's we'll do. How long do we have? As long as you want, pretty much. Okay, so I, I, well, I I wouldn't say as long as I want. My wife would probably kill me. Yeah. This came up last minute for those who don't know. Um, uh, so the long the, the long short history of Harp. Um, in the fifties, they banned upper atmos- upper atmospheric nuclear explosions. The uh, the U.S. military had been trying to destroy the ionosphere for a very long time. They set Why? off Starfish Prime and a whole bunch of nukes trying to blow it up. Why? Maybe we can get rid of it. Why? Because it affects, it, they don't like how it's so unpredictable. That's the best way to put it. Oh, so they, they want to remove like a portion unpred- of nature because it's unpredictable? Exactly. Okay, gotcha. So it doesn't fit into our tactical plan and it will affect uh, uh, our situational awareness and we need it to go. Oh, well, now, military please, is always as fast right. As possible. So if you don't believe me, they had a thing called uh, the Westford Needles where they dropped uh, several million dipole antennas into space to create an artificial ionosphere that would be more predictable. <laughs> Those are now all over the North Pole. Right. So um, oh, after uh, failure after failure, they finally you know, banned upper atmospheric nuclear explosions for obvious reasons because it's freaking crazy. Um, the same day, they started using sounding rockets. This is little known history. Now we have gone into the twilight zone. What's a sounding rocket? Number the sounding 10, rocket what is what is. everybody complained about in Wallops uh, shooting lithium. NASA admits to spraying lithium from a rocket. Gotcha. That's a sounding rocket. So in 58, they started shooting them off in the Sahara Desert. You can't make this stuff up. It's on my timeline. It's at climateviewer.org slash geoengineering hyphen timeline. This is the, the research mecca. You're going to freak out when you see it. Um, and you can just go to the filter and click on uh, Star Wars. Filter by Star Wars, you'll see all that stuff about dumping barium in space. Um, So they started firing these sounding rockets to punch a hole in the ionosphere or make it glow. Can't make this stuff up. And they did it with chaff. So the aluminum that was coming out of the rocket would make the entire planet glow. And they noticed this with the Saturn V rocket, especially because it's so dang big. Mm. Um, Yeah, and then finally they have one called Project High Water. They literally just dumped water. They're like, let's see what happens when we dump water in it. That'd be cool. Um, Then they had like the CARE project where they shot a missile, they shot a a rocket up and had it kind of, you know, as it's curving over, dump out a cloud of uh, chemicals and see where it goes. So they use HARP 
to see where those chemicals go. The reason why. This is just the most basic function of this, why they've been doing it for 60 years. So I'm going to start there. They use it to diagnose the ionosphere because it's so unpredictable. The ionosphere is invisible. So you need a medium to be able to see it. Same thing. You go to the hospital. They put nuclear radiation in your vein, veins yeah, so that they can barium see barium some. Exactly. So barium and strontium are preferred chemicals for this purpose. And they dump it in space, they heat it with a microwave, and then they can see it. Then, now we flash forward to today, even in 1994, out of Arecibo, the one in Puerto Rico, there's an ionospheric heater there. It was destroyed by a hurricane. They rebuilt it bigger um, later. But in 1994, they had a thing called the CRES, C-R-R-E-S, satellite, combined release rocket experimental satellite, um, that would dump barium and strontium on command. They push a button, dump chemical. Chemical is dispersed. Shoot a radar. Shoot the radar from Puerto Rico. Um, and they would use that to diagnose that. So, one sec. Not yet. Shut the door. My, her cousins are here now, so it's like party time. There's four of them. All right. Uh, yeah, they're, they're waiting for me to get the four-wheeler. So, we'll speed this up. So, in 1994, they started HARP, and they got it from very quickly up to um, 3.6 million watts. And they started actually modifying the ionosphere with it directly. And they do that by heating um, these chemicals and making a plasma. So that's pretty cool. What's up? <laughs> Party time today. So, um, yeah, so they started heating these chemicals. And, and it basically, can, they can create artificial mirrors in space. They can, um, this is the most interesting one that's recent. They can suck radiation out of space and create artificial aurora. The reason why, back in the 58 with the Starfish Prime, they found out that energy was jumping from pole to pole, pole to pole, pole to pole. All the nuclear radiation from Starfish Prime fried satellites worldwide because it was bouncing pole to pole, and they didn't know why it was bouncing like that. Then they came up with something called the Christophilos effect to call it, to give it its first name. If you go to Wikipedia, this is fascinating. Go to Wikipedia and go to Christophilos effect and then hit um, history and scroll down through it. And the one that's the biggest, read that one because they've totally edited it down to crap now. But it actually tells you the whole history. So they've scrubbed that from Wikipedia. But – what they realized quickly was that this could be an anti-satellite system, that they could destroy satellites at will if they could understand how to bounce these things back pole to pole. Sure. Those are called hops. They're whistler waves. Whistler waves are fired from harp up here in Alaska. They come up and they go down and they gather radiation as they go and, and electrons. And then when they come back and hit the pole, you get an aurora. So the idea is that if somebody launched an EMP attack on America, Hart might be our only savior. <sighs> Blew my mind. If a solar flare like the Carrington event came our way, a radiation remediation system would be the only thing that could save us. Firing tons and tons of these missiles to get all that radiation out as fast as possible. Yeah, we're going to have Aurora Borealis. It's going to be the brightest light show you've ever seen in the universe. And maybe we won't all die from nuclear power plants blowing up and m melting down simultaneously. So this is a love-hate thing, man. You know what I mean? I don't like what they're doing. I don't like that it's not public, that people don't understand that these elf waves they're generating can affect your brain, that the Russian government warned it's a mind control weapon. ClimateViewer.com slash harp. You can read it H A A R P. ClimateViewer.com slash harp. The Russian government says it's a mind control weapon. The Russian government says it's a mind control weapon. Warned the international community that this kind of stuff shouldn't happen because <laughs> they used to do it with the woodpecker back in the day uh, with the Duga 3, the one at Chernobyl, before it blew up. So Chernobyl was hooked up to this radar that was called the woodpecker that would send this chipping, chirping sound back in the day. And people said it was weather control. It made a, a stalled front outside of California. It altered our weather and all this stuff back in the day. Russia's way, Russia was way ahead of us on all this you know, ionospheric modification stuff. And we caught up real big time with HARP 
It's the king of the crop right now. Um, there's also one run by Cornell that's down in Jicamarca, Peru. It's four megawatts. It's actually bigger than Hart. Um, and now they're building a new one in Norway that's 100 gigawatt. That's that's uh, Doc Brown in Back to the Future. He said 1.21 gigawatts. 1.21 gigawatts was a lightning bolt. Right. The one they're building in Tromso, ISCAT 3D, E-I-S-C-A-T 3D. Is an upgrade to the the heater that's already there. The heater that's there is 1.2 mil- million watts. This one's going to be 100 billion watts. That's over a hundred lightning bolts coming out of that thing. And and one more time, the reason for doing this is to overcome an EMP. No, the reason they're doing it is because Bernard Eastland said in order to control hurricanes and tornadoes, we need 100 gigawatt. John Hersher, when asked if HARP can steer the weather, said, no, we cannot steer the weather. In order to do that, we would need 100 gigawatt. Mm-hmm. We're only at 5 gigawatt. So, guy who invented it, guy who runs it, John Hersher runs it, both say we can steer tor- tornadoes and hurricanes with 100 gigawatts, and they're making it. That's why. Okay. So it's a big issue, dude. So we got mind control component, we got weather modification component, and uh, weather creation and direction component. Yeah, and and uh, what they call uh, what's the term? Uh, were you viewing underground? Yeah. So they could viewing Russian or uh, Iran's nukes in caves underground. So they ground penetrating radar, um, and they do this with something called LOFAR. LOFAR is the low frequency array. It's in your, all over Europe. It covers the whole thing. And it detects low frequency signals. So, so forget about you, your little underground bunker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, they could see that. Mm-hmm. So they actually pass on waves all the way through the planet. And they catch them on the other side. And that's called HALO. HARP LOFAR is the HALO system. And HALO can find anything underground. So uh, tomography, that's the word. That's what I was looking for. So tomography, they, 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 they can actually find underground structures with HARP when they have these listening arrays like LOFAR. Fascinating. So at the end of the day, th- HARP is not one thing. It's so ridiculous to even try to say, well, give me two or three things it does. It does like 15, bro. It is a test bed for future technologies. It is expanding. Star Trek phasers will come from what they're doing at HARP. The reason why Raytheon already has turned harp into a mini one. It's called the AMISR fit on the back of a truck. Now they've got harps that they put on boats, straw man array, mobile VL, um, mobile ELF generation systems, put them in uh, oil rigs to what they call project Lucy, project Lucy in the sky with diamonds. I swear to God, this is true. There's a group called the Arctic methane emergency group, AMEG. They say that methane is going to kill everybody on the planet coming out from the Arctic. And they said that 50 gigatons could kill us any minute like it did for the dinosaurs. They said that ice records show that dinosaur farts melted ice, uh, methane ice, and killed them. And that that's happening today. So Malcolm Light and one of the guys from AMEG got together and said, let's use HARP to turn the methane gas into diamonds. Oh, and this is where it gets better. David Keith, most <laughs> most hated geoengineering solar radiation management uh, advocate in the world, at the SRM 2015 conference said, "Yeah, we're going to do uh, SRM with uh, you know aluminum, titanium oxide, sulfur, and diamonds." So what they're talking about is that methane and diamonds have the same like structure. And that methane's like this, and when they hit it with a 13.56 megahertz signal, they can compress it into a diamond. And diamonds would do solar radiation management because they would reflect incoming sunlight and cool the planet, which is currently illegal because geoengineering SRM is illegal. (laughs) Well, everybody in the world signed it except for the United States of America. So... All the countries in the world agree that SRM should be illegal, but we haven't signed it. Sounds like NMOD all over again. So, yeah. Go ahead. 
Sorry. Using HARP to make diamond clouds to block sunlight and alleviate our gas problem. The problem with that is they want that gas so they can frack it. And they're going to have fugitive emissions all in the North Pole. And if they can turn those fugitive emissions into diamond dust, they can get paid by the carbon tax um, oligarchs. True story. Got a video called Lucy in the Sky Project, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Go watch it. You know, the thing that gets me about all of this is that uh, once upon a time, it's like, okay, we're the citizens. We support the nation. We support the country. We have politicians that, uh, yeah, they're politicians, but largely they're, you know, they're, they're looking after the best interests of the country and so forth. Now it's like, well, wait a minute. I thought the military and all the associated science and these various departments and agencies and freelancers and everybody else, contractors that they, you know, that they, uh, they partner with to uh, get these various projects underway and to see what happens. It's, it's, it's almost as though this, it's almost as though the military, the political system, the financial system, and even the scientific community, they have all somewhat outpaced their usefulness within the current paradigm of us and them and some sort of um, survival thing. We must survive. So we, in order to survive and prosper, we must have a powerful military. We must be able to obliterate all our enemies at one time. But, you know, uh, when you go back to the president of IBM back in the 70s who said that there's no reason whatsoever why any individual would ever need a personal computer. Oh, you know, that guy. Uh at what yeah, point? That's did, pri- priceless. Well, Jim, you know what I'm getting at is when does all of this just collapse? I, I keep asking the question, what can we do about it? And the answer seems to be do nothing. Just let the dumbass apparatus fall apart. However, there's liable to be a lot of collateral damage if we stand by idly and just let them do what they want without even, you know, talking about it, mentioning it, putting it up on the web, doing what you do, doing what I do, and all of that. You can't just let them have their way. But at the same time, I don't think they're going to be successful ultimately. It, it seems like now they've reached a point where they're too busy cleaning up their own messes to make any real progress. I mean, am I, am I close or it, it sounds yeah. kind of good I mean, coming out of my mouth, like but I'm not sure if it's true, you know? So so it's it's kind of like a two-part thing. Um, so you're familiar with the web bot, right? Yeah, oh yeah. You said that a NWO gets formed in 2017. I, I don't know. Maybe we're all screwed anyway. Um, but I don't think so. I think that the new world order is easily defeatable and I've already started it with my logo. (laughs) So the new world order is actually us. The new world order can be whatever you want it to be. Now, of course there's a bunch of, you know, rich oligarchs that have decided what they mean when the presidents are saying new world order. They're originally referring to the new world moral order. That was proposed back during the World War II, you know, axis of evil stuff. And that New World Moral Order is now the New World Order. Because there are no morals. But I think it's easily defeatable because guess what? They've already made monuments to us. I am the New World Order. I believe the New World Order means that I am free. And that there's nothing that can be dictated from a global government that applies to me. It may your global government rules might apply to my psychopathic government, but they do not apply to me. The new world order can be whatever you want it to be. So at the end of the day, I believe that it's just in the headspace when they talk about the synchronicity and all oh, everybody's gonna, you know, get it and we're gonna get out of this scot free. A lot of people don't get that. You know, that you have to determine what that new world order will be, because there already is one and they have decided what it is. If you decide that it's not that, that it is this, who are they to stop you? So really, all the power is in our heads. We just have to understand that it is to begin with and then take it from them. And I see that there are a lot of you know digital warriors out there that are doing that on a daily. Um, but I don't see you know I don't see it uh, you know really happening for the public because they are fed so much consumption. you know they're on this entertainment loop, you know. Or riding the fear porn wagon. So I think that it's inevitable that they will fail because of the rapid, you know, intelligence gathering of the Internet. People are, are, are getting smarter whether they like it or not. You can't ignore, you know, what's going on in the world anymore. And eventually everybody's going to see enough of it and to say, I'm going to fix this. 
not you. I'm not going to wait on somebody else to do it. I'm going to fix this. And that's why I built, you know, Climate Viewer 3D. That's my way of saying, not only am I going to fix this, I'm going to make a tool that other people can fix this. Um, and I hope that that's a good idea. I mean, if I'm wrong, come tell me how I'm wrong and how I can make this work where we're going to use it as a tool to do good in this world. Not just sit on the sidelines and go, yeah, I subscribed to your YouTube. I watched it, man. I mean, like, you actually see, hey, that guy's got a problem. I mean, it's only in the next county. You know, it's like a 20-minute ride for me. I should do that. Bam, I'm in. And we're off and changing the world. But it's not going to happen until people, you know, know that they can um, win. People are so demoralized, you know, so demoralized. Let me ask you something. So, so is the is the Heart Project shut down in Alaska as of June? Uh, supposedly no. that was going to happen. It's still up and running, right? Yeah, yeah. They sold it to the University of Alaska. It never ever actually shut down. It cost them, I think, it was five hundred thousand dollars a day to turn that thing on. Is that all? Wow. Yeah, I know. But the military was like, "Look, we don't need it." And everybody in the internet world, I'm, I saw two prominent YouTube channels with over a hundred thousand subscribers each get into a war over what they thought was going on. And, um, they were all wrong. Like everybody was wrong. So the reason why harp is gone and the military doesn't need it anymore. And the university of Alaska is having an open house just like normal is because they own it now. And you know what? The military will go there and occasionally use it just like before. Um, the difference is that Dennis Papadopoulos from the university of Maryland came up with a proposal for the straw man array, which is a mobile harp. It does. It's not fixed in a fixed location. Strategically, that's better. Do you want your death ray to be in on Jim Lee's Google map, you know, open source map? Hell no. <laughs> I mean, seriously, would you want your death ray, your number one weapon of doom right there where everybody's like, I know where it is. Oh, there we'll it is. Bomb yeah. It doesn't stop bombs yet. Okay. Right. So, and it's kind of close to Russia. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so they put them on boats, and that's why the military sold it. Point blank, period, end of statement. Gotcha. So these mobile alpha rays can be placed at the equator. The reason why this is significant, before, HARP had to be where it is because of the way it works. It uses the electrojet and the fact that a magnetic field line comes out of the ground under HARP and goes up into the sky. And they just basically give it a push like a keto. So at the end of the day... They had harp there because of its physical properties of where it was. Now they've come up with a different way to heat the ionosphere and still make elf waves and do everything they were doing before at the equator. And they're using these mobile arrays to do that today. Plus they have Arecibo, which is at the equator. So they're pump, pumping money into the equ equatorial uh, ionospheric heating. That's why. One last thing, because I know you got to go. You got a house full yeah, of kids. Yeah, I got to go. I got to go. This hey, last one. What's the deal? You wrote. You wrote this thing in here. The death of Google Earth and uh, and the the um, the Chrome sixty four bit supports only sixty four bit uh, and Pappy plugins. Well, what's up with yeah. that? So that's when Google officially killed my first version of um, the program. Like I I was using Google Earth for like two years at that point, um, and I, like I said, you had satellite tracking, ship tracking, plane tracking on that version, and suddenly. Um, almost every plug-in writer on the planet decided MPAPI had to go because it's a security um, threat. So that's why Flash you know, and all these other things don't run by default anymore on any browser. Uh, well, Google decided, you know what, screw it, we're not even going to do it anymore and took out the Google Earth plugin. So on that same article, I show a video of my new system, the one I was telling you about. You should watch it. It's amazing. It's like eye candy. It's going to freak you out. But that, that new version is only going to be possible if people support us. So, you know, again, one last time, GoFundMe.com slash Climate Viewer. It's going to create the most amazing thing you've ever seen. If you want a preview of it, go to ClimateViewer.com and check that article out he was talking about. What was the title of that again? The Death of Google Earth? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and Climate Viewer 3D. Check that out, and you can see the video of the new version that's going to be working Hopefully soon, man. I, I'm dying to get it out there and get people involved. Right now, it's just a viewer. Um, you can go there and see a hundred different websites worth of information in one spot. So earthquakes, fires, live satellite feeds, um, every nuclear plant on the planet, uh, every missile defense radar, every HARP, every ionospheric heater, um, lasers, um, you name it. It's on there. 
Um, if it's not in there, send me a message and it will be in there. So send me some links. But, um, you know, like I said, we're, I'm trying to, to upgrade the, the Climate Viewer 3D thing to this, you know, social media thing that he just uh, referenced in that article. Check it out. And if you like it, support us at the GoFundMe. There's links on uh, both websites to donate. I would really appreciate it. Sounds great. Good talking to you, man. Yeah, this is awesome, man. You're fun, dude. I want to come back and do this again. Well, let's just uh, plan to do that like right now. You're welcome to come well, back look, anytime. So if something weird, I always tell, yeah. you know, I, I tell uh, just about everybody, but not everybody. But mostly, if anything weird pops up, whether it's uh, good, bad, or ugly, you know, sing out, even if it's just for a quick update, you know? Yeah, definitely, man. I appreciate it. All right. And uh, so did, did I say anything you haven't ever heard before? Yeah, a few things. Yeah, I think so. Good. This good. is one of those awesome. things where I may have to play back my own program. Just <laughs> Check it out, man. And everything I said, I back up with references. You can go to my website, and you'll see that I have more references than the dictionary. It's an encyclopedia. A PDF of uh, weather modification, geoengineering, all that stuff. I, whenever I, I give a topic, I don't discuss something unless I can back it up with at least a good reference. And, yeah, some government links are, may get hate from you, but it's better than nothing, right? <laughs> it's completely better than nothing. And I'll tell you, um, Mr. Ghost uh, just said that, um, you know, well, I hadn't heard that part about a harp ever from anybody before. So nobody, nobody tells it. Nobody tells it like it is. And, you know, you can see the entire history on my timeline. I, I would really love for you to check it out, um, climateviewer.org. Um, on the sidebar, it's just the time, it says geoengineering timeline. It's at climateviewer.org slash geoengineering hyphen timeline. I have the entire history of cloud seeding, weather modification, cloud seeding, and what HARP does, plasma seeding. That's the proper term for it. So plasma seeding with HARP and cloud seeding, geoengineering, which is seeding the sky for blocking sunlight, all that stuff wrapped in a bow with a nice app I wrote for that as well. No timeline software software on the planet would hold all of those entries, so I had to write one. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's good <laughs> stuff, man. Fun. And listen, all of the links uh, to uh, and climateviewer.org is extraordinarily interesting. I'm, I've uh, had it up for a few minutes here. There are all That's kinds of stuff on the, on the sidebar. Uh, climate yeah. Viewer mobile map, uh, Climate Viewer reports, geoengineering timeline about you and I, I – ionospheric heaters, nuclear reactors, surveillance, propaganda, EMF health effects, yep. disaster prep. links to all that there. Yeah, so all that stuff's in guest media, so there are links uh, to take everybody right where they want to go, okay? Yeah, awesome, man. I appreciate that, dude. All right. God bless. Stay safe out there. We'll talk again soon. Love you. Mean it. I do. See you. Later. Bye-bye. Wow. Jim Lee, everybody. Is he something or is he something? He has a tall forehead, which uh, would suggest to me a rather large brain. What do you think, Ghost? Smart guy, yeah. And a good guy, too. You know, I, uh, I especially appreciate people who do no harm. And certainly those who mean no harm. However, going to the former, do no harm. Ultimately, telling the truth does no harm, but there may be a little damage as a result of it being released. So, it's birth and death, birth and death, and it goes for, it goes for ideas and uh, ideologies and philosophies, the same as it does for everything that walks, crawls, or flies, or swims down here on planet Earth bubble. So, go forward. Fear nothing. Remember what Merlin said in Excalibur, when a man lies, he murders some part of the world. I think Merlin is right. God bless. Be seeing you.